Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In this video tutorial, we will be creating our register method. We will use this register API method to register new users in our application. So, since we want to register our users, they will provide us with their email, their username and password. And we need to send it to our server to validate that they have met the required password criteria and then register a new user. And to do that, first thing that we want to do is create an HTTP POST method since we are going to post the user data. Now, in my application or in our application, we want to call each method using the method name rather than just the controller. So the way when somebody will try to access our application, they'll say www.example.com forward slash and they're calling this API method, then the controller name which is account and forward slash the method, the method name, so the action name, so I'll say register. So to do that, I need to make sure that I specify that whenever this method is called, we will use the action name to identify this method. So we use the action attribute here in our HTTP post method. Next thing that we want to do is create a public method, which is, a, which is an asynchronous method, and we'll name this method as register. So let's do that. We have our asynchronous method which returns a result of i action result type and then we call this method as register now we have to specify some parameters when we are registering a user so we would need to specify a register view model object that will contain all the registration properties that will come from a form that's a registration form that we will create later in our angular application so we'll call that object as form data which will contain all the form data and let's add the missing reference to our register view model using mg coauth models now the next thing that we want to do is use the from body attribute since the options that we are going to send to register the properties is going to come from the body of our front-end application and now let's go ahead and code this method so the first thing that we want to do is we need to create a list that will hold all the errors if there are any errors related to let's say in our startup class we mentioned that our user needs to have at least one digit in his password so let's say the user sends the data with a password without any digit in it. So we are going to send an error back to the user saying that he requires at least one digit. Therefore, all these kinds of errors, we are going to store them in a list and we are all together going to send that list to the user. So let's create a list. Call it string, list of string type. Oh, this should be a low case. String and then let's call this error list equals to new list of string and that's it now the next thing so let me just comment this here saying will hold all the errors related to registration Next thing we want to do is create a user object and we want to create a user object of type identity user so new identity user so when we are creating a new identity user we would need to specify the properties like the username the user's password and the user's email so that we can create a new identity user object and where are we going to get these properties from we are going to get this from the form data object in our method parameter that was supplied by the form 
that would be created in the angular front end so let's go ahead and say email is equal to form data dot email this will be a comma sorry and username is equal to form data dot username and password no we cannot add password here we will add the password later and we'll add an property for security stamp which is equal to guid dot create a new guid and then we will convert it to string so these are these three properties that we will supply to create a new identity user so we will not supply the password here we will just use the security stamp the security stamp is nothing but uh, it it looks for any kind of changes that will appear so if the user's password is changed or the or the any information like the username is changed then the security stamp will be updated so if there is an error let's say and we return back the error list we don't register the user we return back the error list and there is a, then the user updates the password and then the user updates any information and sends it back the security stamp will be updated and that's one of the reason why we are creating a security stamp now the next step is to create a object call it as result and here we will use the await operator and wait for the result using the user manager object that we created through dependency injection we will call the create async method and then we will create this new user and when we create this user we need to specify the password for the user so the password will come from the password that was supplied to the form data now when this user creation is succeeded we will proceed further if it is not succeeded it will throw an error and obviously we know that the error we are going to add it to the error list and send it back to the front end where the user will modify the properties and send it back again so here we will add a condition if result is dot succeeded which means if result succeeded we were able to create a user then again we will use the await operator using the await operator because we are making asynchronous results asynchronous requests and we want to wait for the result so the user manager again using the user manager object that we created we will call the add to role async and we'll make sure that the default role of the newly created user is set to customer so whenever a new registration takes place in our application we'll make sure that we register that new user as a customer so in future if you want to change the credentials or the role of that user to admin or moderator then you can do that but by default whenever somebody registers they will register as a customer here there is something that we need to do but we will do it later which is sending confirmation email since we have not set up our sendgrid account we will be using sendgrid to send this confirmation email we will add this feature later but for now we will just leave it as it is and just go ahead and create the user without having to confirm the email so now let's go ahead and code this further so our result was succeeded and now we're waiting for the user to be added to the roles and then what we want to do is we want to send a response to our front end to our client that's our browser that sent the information to this api method saying the response is okay 
and then while sending the response we'll make sure that we are not sending the user's password all we want to send is the information that we will require in our angular application to validate the user in the within the application so the information that we will require is the username is equal to user dot username then we'll also send the email equal to user dot email and then we will set a new variable we'll send a status then we'll change the status to one and message is equal to registration successful so by doing this we will have this information sent back and we can then store it in our local storage that, and then we can use this information to validate the user in our angular application rather than making requests every time back to our server okay so now this information will be sent back now the next thing that we want to do is if the result didn't succeed we need to do something so this send confirmation email will actually be here just before sending the response which i told you we will add later since we have to set up the free send grid account to send emails so now if the result didn't succeed what we are going to do is we're going to use an else statement here so there was a problem result didn't succeed probably there was a digit missing in the password or the the criteria didn't meet so we are sending back saying that we could not register what what with the error list now so this error list is a list so what we want to do is run a for each loop here and call it error and the collection is the error list i'm sorry the collection will be the result because the result will return the errors so result dot errors will hold all the errors pertaining to this result so now what we want to do is for each error we want to say model state dot add model error so here for the key we can just leave it empty string and for the error description we can set it to the error dot description now also we want to do is this error we also need to add it to this error list because we don't want to send this back we want to send this error list so what we want to do is error list dot add and add what we're going to add we are going to add the error description that's it so now this every time there is an error generated this error will there will be a for each loop that will run through all the errors and add it to this empty error list that we created now the last thing that we want to do is return bad request because we could not register the user due to there some errors and we are going to send new json result and in this json result we are going to send the error list so if you have seen the demo of the project you would notice that i have created a model that pops up when there is an error which contains all the errors this is basically sent by this error list so now that should be it for our registration in for our application for the registration method in the next video tutorial we will make sure that we go ahead and create the login method as well and then we will test both these methods using postman api thank you for watching please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy